In Session With is a new vodcast series with world-class music creators discussing how to thrive in the music industry today. This vodcast is hosted by Session, the collaboration app for creators. This month's episode is hosted by me, Jen Long. Hey, Laura, welcome to In Session With. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, You are a Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter. You have a career that spanned nearly two decades. Yes. I mean, how did you get started? Was it like you were a young kid and you just loved singing or were you captivated by certain artists? Like, what was the first inspiration behind you being like, I want to work in music, I want to be a musician? Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, I mean, even from, from a very young age, you know, none of my family, which is crazy, none of them were musicians or creatives, which is which is so crazy, really, when you think. Um, but even even as a really young girl, I literally I remember. I think it was the first song I heard was um, Sinead O'Connor's "Nothing Compares to You," which is one of the greatest songs ever and just iconic it. video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, even as a child, like I just sit and you know was obsessed with music just sat and would listen to that song again and again and again and um and then i remember i was at school i was from a very 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 small little town called atherton which was in bolton um and i started you know th- one of my teachers one day played piano and i just instantly felt just an instant connection with with piano and started learning classical piano lessons started that when i was about 8 and I think for years, like, I just had such a strong connection to music. Um, but it was just, I could never really, like, you know, I'd look at, like, the pop stars, you know, as I was growing up, and my voice was always really husky. And I loved I loved the soul singers and the jazz and the, the real, like, classic, you know, Are- when I found Aretha Franklin, I was just like... That's that's the love of my life, you know. And I loved I loved the real songs, the Sinatras, the so I couldn't really, you know, um, relate with a lot of the the pop stars when I was growing up. And then I remember Alicia Keys came along, and I remember like when I first heard Alicia sing "Falling," mm. and I was like, "That's what I am! Like that's what I'd sing! I'd sing music like that!" And yeah. that was the that was the start. And I remember I I, um, I started off singing first in tiny tiny pubs clubs jazz venues you know a lot of empty places at first Mm -hmm. a lot of crazy nights it was always my dad who was gigging with me and my dad would do my music um and i started off at first i was just singing all alicia keys (laughs) all aretha and people were like you've got to learn more songs (laughs) and then and i did that at first and to be honest like i tell everybody like that was the that was the first the first thing i did in music and i found my voice and i was like this is what I am, oh my God, you know, I'm a musician and I knew and I was just playing and playing all these gigs. And um, honest to God, I tell everybody, like playing all the all the jazz venues and the pubs and the clubs for so many years were the, were the making of me because it made my voice so, so strong. And I was just constantly study, studying new songs and really, really got a, an ear for what, what a great song is. Yeah. So I, I really, like I tell everybody that was the best thing I ever did was, was the... The hard work of all the gigs and the the you know that was the early thing when I first did it in Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting yeah. because you always think of like when you're a new musician and you're going out there and you're playing lots of shows, you think about it in terms of exposure. I don't think yes. I've ever heard anyone talk about it in terms of actually like learning the craft and like building mm. your voice and building your repertoire and building your kind of like awareness of what makes a good song a good song. Yes, of course. I mean, and st- you know, and still to this day, I'm I'm so so lucky you know when I'm in studios people it's my voice they they always go crazy about and I always think god like when I when I first started you know my voice I I could sing and I I was a I was always a good singer but I think it was just the constant the practice you know and I I used to have um like a little like a gigging machine (laughs) and it was in my mum and dad's house and I used to practice every single day like, and I remember singing Whitney and Alicia and mm. Shaka Khan and all these songs that my voice at first wasn't strong enough for and just the more I I, I was literally breaking my voice in every day it was like the, the work ethic was just was the thing that set me apart and yeah. it was the the gigging every week that made my voice just suddenly it became like a like a lion voice you know <laughs> so it was the it was the constant practice and the gigging and, and also playing live so much really gave me great experience of how to work with an audience, you know, and how to, 
yeah, I, I could feel almost when I'd sing songs what would move people and what part of a song would would get people. And I think that was like the early, that, that sort of made me the songwriter I am today as well, I think, you know? It's, it's also like when you don't come from a family that works in kind of music or in the entertainment, mm-hmm. when you're not from like a large city like a London or something, it's oh. so hard to know how to get into an industry like music because you don't yes. have the people around you who are like, just talk to this person. You don't have like the connections. Of course. Was that kind of part of the reason you did the X Factor? Because you were like, I don't know where to, the next step is. Well, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, first, the first break I got, so I played played you know all these gigs for many years and then I actually was spotted was spotted quite young about 16 I was by who is now um Matt Aitken from Stock Aitken and Waterman oh, wow so he was obviously like you know a, a songwriting great and he sort of came up north and he was like I've got to meet this girl and and he sort of looked after me for about honestly about three to six months something like that mm. I went back to gigging and you know we had a that was like my first I think that was like the first day I'd ever seen London. <laughs> and then literally, you know, I did I did this for years and then I started to to write songs because I actually auditioned for a TV show that was on E4 mm-hmm. at first. And there was six of us picked from about 10,000 people that had gone for it. Um, and it was me, it was uh, Bluey Robinson, who people will probably know. Mm-hmm. Bo Bruce was on the show, you know, some amazing talent. And that was sort of uh, my first into songwriting. So I was writing. I remember I went for the show and you needed two songs to get on the show. Mm. So I was literally like, just, I didn't even know how to write. I was like, everything's one card. I was just like <laughs> writing a song on my piano. I like, didn't know what I was doing. But I managed to get on the show. And then it was the funniest thing because then I lived in a hostel in London with that experience. Mm. And I suddenly came back, uh, back to my hometown and I was like, I'm obsessed. I just want to write songs now and I don't want to gig anymore with with covers and I want to just like do my own thing. So mm. I started to write all my own songs and made like this little EP that I'd sell in all the venues I played mm. and then I put my music onto MySpace. Oh, um, MySpace. And and I and I I think I was like the most uh, viewed unsigned artist at the time and then I was found I was spotted for a, a a soul project that Mark Ronson was then producing. Oh, wow. So every and I always yeah. tell everybody this like all musicians like every single thing leads to you know nothing is wasted. Every mm. single step is like another step and another step. So that took me to London and and then I sort of you know in London there was so much opportunity cuz like where I came from in Atherton, if people know where I came from, like <laughs> we we they're the most amazing people but there was there was nothing for for music at that time. So it was it was really difficult, so that's why I had to sort of come here. And yeah. um, I lived in a hostel at first. I didn't know anyone. I was very alone. <laughs> but it was, um, but it was the making of me because that was like the first thing. And then I, um, and then one day, you know, I just heard about about the X Factor. Mm. And then I, and then I ended up on in the finals of that, which was life changing, like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, did were you? Did you kind of have an awareness of the world of songwriting and that people were like professional songwriters? Because I guess when you do a show like yeah. X Factor, you're kind of like the lead person, and you're having things written for you, or you're singing other people's songs. Of like course. at the time, were you like, I'm not sure if I want to do this or this, and like, exactly. can I do the two in tandem? Exactly that, to be honest. I mean, that's why, and I'm just going to be honest, like, you know, that's why the journey for me was like, was like uh, quite a bit more difficult than than a standard X Factor journey. Because I think I'd sort of come from, you know, this place of like writing all my own songs, you know, making all my own CDs. I'd been like a real working musician and I'd got in the Ronson band and I'd done all this and then I got onto the show and and I I remember it was like suddenly you've got access to everything you know I was like I literally went from singing in in an empty jazz club in Manchester to like the weekend after it was me and Mariah Curry singing together so (laughs) so my life was like it was it was just like so crazy but but immediately I mean my my judge was um was Cheryl at the time and I think even Cheryl was like, Laura really knows what she what she is. I was constantly playing, still writing all my own songs, and mm. I made it clear when I was on the show, like, you know, if I if I do, and I remember um, Simon actually at the time was like, Laura, if you win this, you know, we have songwriters and we have, mm. and I was really like, no, but I want to write everything, and I've always wrote my own songs. Oh, that's also so patronising. Like, you don't have to bother mm. with the writing anymore. 
Yeah, yeah, and and I think no, no, it, no, it's. I mean, no, it's not on telly. It's, it's obviously it's not yeah. on anymore. But the last few years, it was much more open to songwriters. And mm. I think when I was on it, it wasn't as, you know, they didn't really want you to be as as creative. And I was just so like a, you know, in my own little world and made my own music. Pl- wanted to play on the show and, yeah. you know, live like this. So when I left the show, I was um. Obviously, it was so big when I when I left, and I was I couldn't believe like the public. Thank God to the public, like I was the uh, only one raised in Parliament, and it was and it was so overwhelming. I, I was just and like, Andy Burnham is... brought you up because they they yeah. thought that the phone lines it wasn't transparent, and there'd been some like the votes should have yeah. gone a different way. I mean, still to this day, like it was it was so so crazy when when I was on the show because it, it was just. Yeah, I mean, still to this day, like, I can't explain it. And just the support I had, I was playing like four or five shows a day mm-hmm. for about three or four years. You know, it, wow. it never died down. So I went from, I mean, thank God in, in that sense, I made, I could then make money and live in London mm-hmm. and I could like carry on. But what was what was astonishing was, was I was then offered, you know, a lot of like movies and TV presenting and maybe you could sign this deal and do this pop deal. But I was so headstrong, like, you know, I'm not bothered that I've been sort of left. I was unsigned at this point. I was a bit like I was I was very well known but had no real support. Mm. So it was a very difficult thing to deal with at the time. Yeah. Um and I said to myself, I'm gonna just start from the bottom, completely, you know, humbled with my music and just work with whoever will work with me. So I started off working with uh, completely unknown songwriters at first. Mm. And it took me, I think I wrote a song every day for about five or six years. And then I had a number one in China and Germany and and then the songwriting took off. But it was it was literally like the songwriting and, and also I will say this, like, you know, when you come off a, a talent show, it's it's very difficult in a sense because you have a you have a fan base, but it's uh a lot of the industry don't know what to do with you unless back back in the day I think major labels were much more uh, you know they, they were everything to the making or breaking of an artist so because I didn't have the major label at the time it was a really difficult thing to sort of work with the cool producers at the time and you know get big features and so it, it was it was actually my songwriting and just the constant work ethic and the building of of my independent music that then I got so much industry support, you know, doing songs with like Bugsy Malone, Naughty Boy, Rita Ora. Like, yeah. It, but it was the, it was actually the songwriting that that did it for me because people were just like, she's real talent. Like we need this girl in. Yeah. So, but that took years to build. I mean, it's yeah. it's been unbelievable journey, but it's like killed you as well. <laughs> <laughs> by the end, I was like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> What was like the journey for you from going from just writing for yourself, you know, in I'm going to just say in your bedroom with the yeah, piano to yeah. then going into these like more formal songwriting sessions where, you know, you're doing yeah. like day after day. Sometimes people do, you know, two a day with different producers, oh. with other songwriters who are just like, here we go again. Like, yes. did it feel different in any way? Was it like a new talent that you had to learn? Of course, of course. And 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 I always say this, you know, when, when I've done songwriting interviews and different things, like it's very much a a process that I mean honestly I'm I always tell everybody this I'm nervous every day of my life <laughs> no matter no matter what no matter like what you've written what you're doing you know it is one of them one of them jobs where it's I'm so in love with my music that I want to be the best every day that I can be so every day you turn up and it's it's you're going in with your I, I then hit a point with my writing where I'm working with my heroes you know like this week I've now become um like writing partners with Kathy Dennis. Oh, and Kathy, wow! Kathy, is she was my hero for for years and she's years. She's written and some huge songs. She's she's the greatest, you know. And and I just like when you're in rooms like that, and like this week I worked with Egg White, who was my hero. Like you literally, you you always think I'm only as good as like my last song, and you know, and it's it's a lot of pressure. But you do you do you learn from. So when I first started out, it was just me in a room with a piano, and it's just me, and there's no pressure. Mm. And then I think. um 
you start just sort of getting into it. The more sessions you do, the the better you get, the stronger you get. You know, you. I spent years and years just playing records constantly and studying in my head, like what made that song great and what made it work. And it, I always tell everybody it took me about four years of writing songs to suddenly it was, when I first started, I always said my, my verses and my choruses, they sounded similar. And I'd hear like, like Rihanna Rude Boy and I'd be like, got it, you know, it's so good, it's so, he's doing these songs. And I was so, you know, writing every day, like, I wanna write a song as good as this. And then suddenly after like four years, the choruses would, would just come to me. The choruses would just boom every time, like with the work ethic. So I really believe it is a, it is a tool that, you know, the more effort you put in, you just, you just can, can become, you know, where you the songs are just there with you, you know. It's yeah. it's all about the work ethic and and also, you know, the relationships with people you have in the rooms and yeah, it's it's every session is different, you know. So it and it's and it's also having that confidence, I think, to walk in and I was always quite a shy girl, but it's I just kept it about music and then I just go in and think I'm, I can you know, I'm going to believe in myself. I went through so many different things mm. that it almost gave me that strength. How does it work when you're writing with someone like that and you're like writing different bits and maybe you've both collaborated on the chorus and it gets to the end? How do you discuss like splitting up who's done what? Like, and when it's someone yeah. that you really, really admire, do you ever feel like, I don't really want to argue with them because I, I want this relationship <laughs> to continue? <laughs> well, ag again, I mean, I'm, I mean, some people might feel like I'm, I'm quite, a, I am quite, even though I'm a soft girl, like, I'm very, he I am headstrong. Like, I'm a funny, I'm funny with my music. I'm, I'm tough with it. But I think, um, I mean, usually w with my songs, like I said, I write most of them on piano. Mm. So, well, so you know, if I'm nine out of 10 sessions or whatever, I've written most of the, m the bulk of the song myself on the piano. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I sort of went on splits, it would, it would sometimes be a bit unfair, you know, and sometimes it, even, it, I always say, even if someone only contributes one card to a song, it's like, it can sometimes take my song somewhere amazing. So I always, every song I write, I always keep the splits just equal if we're in the room. I'm I, that's always been my thing and so and most people are like that that I've worked with there's been a couple that sort of are much more about percentages yeah. and this sort of thing but I always think it's just about for me it's like it's the relationships and the uh, keeping the songs just moving you know that sort of has, has worked for me in that way that's so interesting yeah. does it ever get to the end though and you've got this song and you're like what do we do with it now? And someone's like, I want this for my project. And someone else is like, no, I want this for mine. And you're like, no, this is my song. Like, who yeah. claims ownership? Um, well, it's a, fun, it's a funny thing. I mean, usually, like, the songs I'm writing now, whether it's for a specific thing, so if it's, you know, like, recently when I wrote, um, I was assigned to a project. It was Steve Mack, actually, he was doing it. He was, again, one of my heroes. And that was um, that was for, like, it was a movie called Lol Dolls. So I was writing for that because I'd done uh, the movie Four Kids in It, I wrote the theme song for that for, um, it was like Michael Caine and Russell Brand. It was a very big film. Yeah. So that was a, you know, when there's specific projects like that, that's a lot easier because it's just, okay, this is going to be for this and this, you know. Um, if I'm going in at the minute, I'm doing a lot of, when I, after I'd written the Galantis record, Love On Me, that was sort of, that put me into the dance world heavily. Mm. So then ones, because my voice is usually on all the, all the big dance records, I'll just write it and make it sound as much like me as as possible. That, mm. to be honest, every song I write is always it, it is a Laura White story, and I think that's the. To be honest, that's what I think makes my songs authentic. Mm. I never, I never to this day, even you know, like the Rita Ora song. I never thought I'm gonna think what Rita would say. Yeah, it was just a truthful love song, and I think maybe that's what artists can hear. You know, yeah, this is real and. I think it works better that way. For me, for me, it's always worked that way. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing this for so many years now. Has, has anything changed in the process or in the wider industry? Has like the sessions, the frequency or the amount of songwriters, like what changes have you seen? Um, I would say the the only thing that I've that I witnessed over the years was I think as an independent artist, I found when Spotify started, obviously the money with streaming and all of that isn't anywhere near what it used to be you know that that just kills people but in some senses like the spotify situation for me as, as an independent artist 
really was a saving grace because it was like I could I could suddenly get onto a lot of playlists mm. because my streaming was great and I was working with a lot of amazing DJs and this sort of thing. So I, I could suddenly get my music heard on much bigger platforms. I suddenly had a much more fairer situation than when it was just labels and if you've got the label then you get onto the TV and the radios and the so for me like that's what I think I think it has helped independent artists I think it's a much easier world now for independent artists than it used to be mm. that I've noticed yeah. yeah I mean how what's if you're in a writing session and it's with an in- independent artist is there any difference yeah. between being with someone who's independent and being with someone who's signed to a major label are there kind of like different expectations on what's going to come out of that session do you know, I think, um, I mean, like I said, I mean, usually, usually I do go in uh, and, you know, and sing the songs and I'm usually the artist in the session. But occasionally, I mean, when I did, um, when me and Bugsy Malone did the record, Bugsy, Bugsy was in that session. And what I will say is, I mean, Bugsy at that point was, I think he still is actually, but he, he was independent. And I always think they seem freer. That's that's my opinion. Like, you know, I always think they're like, let's just create something great mm. and let's just like run with it. Whereas I think a lot of artists that I've seen with that, it's very much like, no, 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 I won't, I won't be allowed that. Yeah. Or this won't get through. And it's like, sometimes it can sacrifice the great song or the art, you know. Mm. So, yeah, I think being independent definitely has its, has its strengths yeah. massively. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Spotify earlier and there was a lot of controversy surrounding Spotify giving songwriters credits on the platform yeah. and paying songwriters a, 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 a decent course. fee at the same time. Yeah. Like, how much do you get bogged down in the industry side of things? Yeah, well, I'm I'm lucky actually because because I've now I mean, and it's taken me a while to find the right manager. You know, I've had some fantastic managers over the years. I've had you know, I had Elton John's team, I had Rita Ora's team, but they just I think for whatever reason it just wasn't quite the right fit at that time. You know, I was very specific musically about what I wanted to do, and so my manager now is is a man called Paul Kennedy, and he's he's amazing in the sense he just does all my business. You know, and I can obviously I do I do play a part in it as well, but <laughs> he's not just having it. But um, but he sort of looks after that and he says, you know, you just run creatively, you make all your own decisions. And I think I think you know before that, I was very much there were there were a lot of times where I felt quite you know people trying to control a lot of things and control creatively what I should say and what I should do. And I was just it's not me, you know. I'm I'm really I'm a free spirit. So I think. No, I've had I've had a great manager, and he sort of looks after the business side, and and then also, you know, the more the more you are writing, and the more my artistry is is, you know, now I'm getting my own album together, and it's a uh, you need you do need that because that your brain can only do so much when you're working every day all day. It's mm. it's a lot for artists to to uh, to do just themselves, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it's surprising how big a team you end up building oh, around yeah. one artist yeah and and i will say to, to all independent artists and writers who are listening that is the most joyous thing because i think you know for years honest to god it was just me on my own so imagine that i was i i wrote um the rita one which was which was grammy nominated and the galanti song when i was completely unpublished and unmanaged so it can be done you know if you can just if you can just make your songwriting that strong then you can then you can get in the rooms and you can you can honestly make all your own look and then the more your career grows and now my publishers there's probably I mean it's worldwide there's hundreds now who are fighting for me now and I think oh my god like no it's not just me like filling venues on my own putting orchestras on and I used to be literally like ready for like I was exhausted you know you just think god so you appreciate everything when you've come from nothing and built it just one person it's it's amazing so i hope that gives hope to everybody listening who's like you know sometimes when i when i'd hear interviews and i'd think they've got all these people working for them you couldn't relate mm. but honestly my journey was just me at the beginning so it can be done what happens when you go into a songwriting session and perhaps like the mood is off or you find you're not really connecting with the person yeah, that you're in the yeah. session with does that ever ha- have you ever literally just like called it off and I'm do you know I'm so glad you've talked about this because no one ever talks about these things like we all saying like it's just amazing because you do what you do sometimes have times that are like that you know and I, I can't tell you all like the the amount of times I um 
I've had, you know, real heartache in music as well. You know, you can, you can, I was recently going to do a song, which was, um, it was, it was with, you know, an established rapper at the time. And I'd written, I was sent this song and it was like six months. So many people had tried writing it. And in the end I'd, I'd written it and I got the song and it was, and I'd written, I think, yeah, I'd written a hundred percent of this record. And then last minute, it was a political thing where they wanted a, a vocalist just from that particular label. Mm. So I was I was taken off. And I was like so upset because I'd I'd this particular song as well was a hundred it was it was totally all my writing and my entire story and I was so connected with it. I you know, for three weeks I was like heartbroken, you know. So you do you do um you do go through tough times. You do go through sessions where you will turn up and every so often you will just work with someone and you'll think they're just not my people and usually I'm like I love people you know so I can I can usually make anything work and some situations are just sometimes people will be quite they're not the most um talkative or they're quite awkward so you know you meet all kinds of different people and you've got a sort of I like everybody feeling comfortable and safe. Like I'm one of these people. So I like looking after everyone and you know, so I think but but every so often I have had a difficult session and I won't lie to everyone, you go home and you're like, you can't you know, you contemplate quitting everything. No. <laughs> you do like you do have these days where you think, obviously I never work I'm in it till the end until I'm ninety five, I'm one of them. <laughs> but but you do have them days where some days you can be so heartbroken, you know, when like, you know, when I when I mentioned the X Factor, you know, that took me for years I had the entire public coming up to me saying what they did to you, you know, it's terrible. And I was so upset for it for a very long time. It was traumatic. Yeah. But um, but but in the end, it, it will be the making of you, you know. Mm. I think the more you go through, whether it's relationships <laughs> or like life, like it becomes the making of you. So them sessions that are difficult, you've got to just sort of brush yourself off. It takes you about three days, and mm. then you forget it, <laughs> and then don't go again. <laughs> it, must be, it must be so difficult when you don't really have like the separation between life and work that other yeah. people have when your entire career becomes your personality it's who you are exactly. and so if like and you're putting so much of yourself into the songs into the music oh. it's your stories and, and your experiences yeah. like can you separate between work and home like is there any separation that that is again like very very difficult because i think you know for instance when when i lost that record it was a it because it was a it was a singer thing mm. So it felt like I was so personally upset. It was, and, and you know, them sort of situations can really, they knock your confidence because you think, God, I've done years of it and had such amazing songs like with so, so much support from so many artists and, but yet you can still be treated like that. And so it never stops, you know, you will still go through them times and it's them moments that are difficult to separate because you, because you live with it. If your confidence is knocked in music, it affects you personally you know that's who you are like I'm just Laura White yeah. all the time and um you know when when I you know when I came off the show like if I'm if I'm walking around Bolton <laughs> it's like everybody's <laughs> we loved you on that show and it's like it's like you've really got to I, I had to seriously like, hold my feet to the ground and like know just know who I was and believe in my music because if I went to the gym if I went to the local shop if I went anywhere I had someone's opinion on God. maybe do this, maybe do. So I had to, you know, you've got to really. I think in music you have got to really know yourself, you know, and mm. and not let it affect all that, you know. And just you will have tough days. You have days that make you feel on on cloud nine, you know. Unbelievable things can happen, mm. but you've just got to either way. Okay, we can be great, you know. I always, I think honestly, I think I survived because every night I go home and I play. Sinatra and Aretha and I think <laughs> there's a long way I've got to go yet like, I can be great to you know and they're, like, they're, like, they're like the greats to me so I just think I have a long way to go and just focus on them I, I've always been like that I don't I don't focus on the industry I focus on music and being greater just in myself you know yeah no totally do you, when you have these like big songwriting sessions coming up are you kind of like 
trying to create drama in your own life you're like right I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna send a shitty text message and have a fight tonight so that I've got yeah. some content <laughs> yeah yeah you know and that for you for years and years like I used to honestly feel like oh if I'm not in love oh there's not a terrible breakup which I was telling the guys before there's always a breakup with me <laughs> like like the music's gone <laughs> like men I'm like oh that's another thing <laughs> <laughs> terrible but um but actually over the years the more the more I was like in and the more my music was going I, I realised, like, do you know what? I just need to not rely on, like, these these crazy life stories. I knew I was I suddenly was writing that many songs. I just had to be ready. So now I, I can sort of just rely on a good title. Right. And and then sometimes I use, like, I use all my exes. Sorry if you want to. <laughs> but I use them all, like, all my past stories and sort of and relate with them as though they're, like, current day. Because sometimes if, if it... You know, if you're too busy for a boyfriend, <laughs> there's no, there's no current stories. <laughs> I was gonna ask, do you ever like worried about oversharing? Where you're like, oh, they're definitely gonna know that I'm talking about them in this song. Yeah. Have you ever I had a text like, know. excuse me? Yeah, yeah, many. <laughs> <laughs> but I have. Thought, I think you know, and it's one of the things where I always think that that is the most wonderful part of of our job, though, because you know, as, as girls, like I, girls and guys who are watching, like breakups can be the most painful, you know, life-changing things that can happen in a way. And I think sometimes, like, you can, I can be so in pain with it, with the situation, and then I'll, I won't feel like going to work out. I won't feel like, right, I'll be so upset, and then I'll go in, and once I've turned something into art, I'll be like, there I am, and, and I remember who I am again, you know? And it's, I think that's the best thing about our job because we can always create greatness from from real pain you know and that's the same with my career everything I've gone through has gone into my art you know I really believe that like the 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 ups and downs of my life made me the artist and the writer I am and you like mentioned MySpace yeah. a little while back <laughs> in our conversation and I was thinking god yeah because when you started out we just didn't have like the social media that we have now no? so it's like even when you went you could like finish and go home and you're finally alone but now you're you're always Laura White oh my yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> and and you live with it you know and even that you know the more the more public you are like people will they'll, they'll give opinions and you know so many of my fans like when I've I did Galantis and then you know Cash Cash and all these big feature records and but you know some of my fans are just about my soul music so they're a bit when is the next soul one and then I'll be like oh you know and you can I think like I said just follow your own path and yeah don't and, um, read the comments and listen to that yeah don't google yourself definitely not yeah <laughs> <laughs> and please nobody else google me oh, 2008 wasn't my strongest year <laughs> oh, I was like oh my god <laughs> I mean, what, what advice would you give to a new artist who is starting out now who's in a similar position to where you were you know perhaps they're not living in like a large city perhaps they don't have yeah. contacts or any sort of uh, anyone to show them the path to where they should be going like what advice would you give to someone who is starting out now so just you know what go for everything at the beginning write a song every day write a song as much as you can just just do everything possible you know gig everywhere get your voice get your instrument the best it can be and just and yeah and just go for everything you know follow your music be absolutely you're gonna die for it you know mm. what I mean it's yeah. it takes that and I think like you know me at first when I first moved to London it was like I said I knew no one I was so lonely living in this hostel and I was like what am I doing? But but I think it was the believing in the music that just kept me going all them years, you know? Mm. And I think that's what you need, you know, and just... And also, you know, I, I tell you what else really, really helped me was was listening to amazing podcasts, you know, and the writer is... I used to love um, Soda Jerker as well as a podcast, all the great songwriters. Um, and also I love to read business books and books, uh, books on, you know, The Secret, books like that like on you know seriously with with positive thinking it just brings everything and I think if you start a day where you're such a body won't work with me like, and I can tell when I when I walk in a room and meet someone I can tell if they've if they they've won or they've lost before before they've even started you know wow. like like you can see it some artists they just I'll give it a few years and if it doesn't happen I'll quit and I was never like that I was like mm. Me and, mu me and music, are, we're in it till the end. What are we doing, music? It's almost like it's a person with me. <laughs> you know, and I think that that is honestly how, how you've got to be. Mm. 
you've got to care about it that much because music is everything as well you know to someone like me it's it is everything yeah so yeah so i think kids like it don't matter how, what a tiny town you come from atherton there was just a tesco <laughs> god bless atherton i love it but there was, there was no music i remember at the time and so i just played all the gigs and did everything possible mm. you know yeah and, and like thinking back now with everything that you know like what yeah. piece of advice would you have given to yourself in like 2008 uh i think oh god it's so difficult oh, no. i think it would always be to just really just hard work is just gonna outweigh everything mm. you know yeah and just to like just to keep my head down also you know i was because i, I am quite a, a sensitive soul as a person you know i cry like every day at something like, i'm one of these people so i think if you're like that I, I had to really be be tough in a way. I had to get tough and I had to learn how to be tough because people could just say things and it would just like break my heart. Mm. So I think I think I'd have said to myself, you know, just always just listen to yourself and just block out everything else yeah. and just follow that. You know, if I could give that to anyone, I, th I think I'd give that. Yeah. yeah. Final question. Yeah. What would be your dream session? Oh, well, well, it was always, it, honestly, it was always Egg White and Kathy Dennis. And then I've done that as well. <laughs> so I'll say, I'll say my next, I'll say my next one. I mean, um, I want to write a song one day. I worked with one of my heroes over lock, over lockdown. We did a, I did, I did the duet to her part, which was Emily Sander. I love Emily Sander as a writer as, as well. But I'd love to do Alicia Keys. I love um, Burt Bacharach. And I would probably say Diane Warren next. And Steve Mack, Steve, me and Steve Mack have never yet wrote a song and I really want to work with Steve Mack as well. These are some good so targets. Good. Also, now that uh, now that we can travel again, you need to find like, I want to work with this one producer in Barbados, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and also in person, you know, because when, when I mentioned Steve, like we were both assigned to the, to the LOL dolls, but I never met him. Mm. So it was like, a, you know, I was just sending song. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, I want to be, in the room on that one and and yeah just there's so many greats and ryan tedder i've always loved ryan tedder as well <laughs> there's so many of my friends that oh like, thank you so much for talking to me it's thank been you, such Shane. a pleasure i feel like i've learned so much as well i feel inspired thank, by our conversation thank you and you're a wonderful interviewer oh, i love you thank you so much yeah it's lovely to have you here thank in you. session with thank you for more episodes of In Session With, subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us on your preferred podcast provider. To get Session's free music collaboration tools, go to session.id.